Bienvenidos a WrestleMania con el luchador, el señor, el protector del mundo, señor, Brian Stoudor. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Brian WrestleMania. Uh-oh, we've got some Nekasaur action. Heck yeah, I'm down for this. I love playing against Nekasaur. Uh, yeah, um, I'm expecting a lot of wheels over there, so I'm going to go and keep on this one. We've got Ancient Tomb. Yeah, we're going to go and keep. Um, it's not that of exciting of a hand, but we have our, our mana base, and Ancient Tomb is going to be really good in this one. With Breon, you, you want to have like a lot of mana or have some mana rocks. And simply having our entire mana base uh, ready for us, it's not that exciting. But I've been trying to play some Breon today, and it's been it's been a little uh, a little defeating today. So I'm gonna keep on this one. This is a nice little mana hand. It's a little slow, but hopefully with that extra card draw, we can really take advantage of it. But yes, welcome to Breon WrestleMania. I hope you have your Lucha mask on. So we are playing Breon Stout Arm. He has Life Link for red. Sacrifice a creature other than Breon. Breon deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target player. So just imagine Breon picking up a creature and spinning and throwing them at our opponent. That's how I always do it. Okay, and our opponent got an island off that one. So let's go ahead and go. Let's go Bloodstained Mire, and then we'll go and pass the turn. Playing against Nekasaur. So at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Then, whenever an opponent draws a card, which is us, Nekasaur's going to deal one damage to us. Always uh, love playing against Nekasaur. I love playing Nekasaur. It's a fun commander in. Let's go and crack this Bloodstained Mire. Let's grab a Sacred Foundry, put it into play tapped, and then we'll go and pass the turn. Act of Treason. Okay. So let's go Evolving Wilds. We'll get that down. We'll go and pass the turn. And then we'll be okay. Once we get that Evolving Wilds cracked, we can get down the Ancient Tomb and get down the Quick Breon the following turn. And then hopefully we can get that, uh, that Nekasaur card draw up and running. But yes, man, I, I love playing Breon. Breon's a lot of fun. Okay, so it gets down a relic right there. Let's go and crack this Evolving Wilds. So we've actually got a pretty even split in our hand. We've got uh, two mountains and two, f two plains. Um, what I'll probably do is just grab another mountain. Just It's always good to have red for the activation on Breon. Okay, coming in hot. Condemn. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's go for Ancient Tomb, though. Let's go Ancient Tomb. Let's go Breon. Let's get the... Uh, he's going to come slide into the ring. And then we'll go and pass the turn. But yeah, so as far as my Breon deck, um, we have a lot of low-costed, high-powered creatures. And at the same time, we're running a lot of gain control spells. So you can see we have Active Treason in our hand. Gain control target creature gains haste. Untap it. So with a lot of the stuff that you're going to be doing... Uh-oh. It's a Fairy's Puzzle Box. So we're going to draw... We're going to put all of our cards on the hand on the bottom in order to draw that many cards. Okay. So you can see where, you know, simply getting down Ancient Tomb and Mountain, we're kind of good to go now. We miss out on Active Treason and Condemn, but okay. I'm fine with playing a new hand every time. So we're going to put these on the bottom. And draw a new hand. Um, I may go ahead and let's, uh, let's swing in first. That's a nice little hand draw right there. Coming in hot for four, dropping down to 36. Let's go Soul Ring. Then we can go Boro Signet. Now, do we want to O-ring that Teferi's Puzzle Box? I think I'm kind of... We've got a lot of mana in this hand. Let's make the land drop. Um, I think I may O-ring that Coalition Relic, because I'm actually okay with drawing a bunch of cards. It keeps our hand really fresh. So let's go ahead and O-ring... Um, actually, we, no, we, well, we'll still hold up Boros Charm, so let's go... Um, let's tap for white. Tap for twos. Get down O-ring. Exile the Coalition Relic, so he's going to lose that mana. Yeah, and then we still have enough to activate the Boros Signet and fire off a Boros Charm. So worst comes to worst, um, if, if he tries to destroy anything, we can fire a Boros Charm off to give Breon Indestructible, and then we can um, at least fire it off for four and, you know, fire it at him. But yeah, we missed out on level, or level's going to go on the bottom. If we can find a way to shuffle a library, we can get back into it. But it is, I think I've only won one game by casting, because when you cast level or exile the... Exile your entire library. So um, <laughs> sometimes that happens. and uh, But you can close the game out if your opponent's at 10. I've done it. feels really good. It feels good to win the game with no library. And this might be... No, this is Sad Robot coming in. Okay. So we got Sad Robot coming in. And then we're going to go ahead and fire this Boros Charm off. Deal 4 damage. We'll put him down to 32. We can swing in with uh, Breon. Well, he's probably blocked with a sad robot to get that card draw. 
And then we'll be drawing we'll be drawing four cards. Yeah, I'm okay with that. We could even get a spot where we could draw five, but yeah, I'm okay with firing this uh, Boros Charm off, especially if we're gonna lose it. Uh, so let's go and tap that mana. Deal four damage to target player. Drops into thirty-two. Swords to plowshares. Yeah, we're gonna put them on the bottom. Okay, so we get wear tear. He doesn't have any enchantment. The only artifact up there is Teferi's puzzle box. Let's get down the cliff top retreat. Um, yeah, we can go and swing in. He's probably gonna block with the sad robot. We'll at least get that life that life gain. Coming in hot for four. Get the sad robot up and running. And then we can just hold on to wear tear next turn. Um, if not, then it'll go down to the bottom. So if, if we want to fire it off, we can. If not, then we'll be okay. But on a side note, guy, if you'd like to, on a side note, guys, if you'd like to go to wrestling school, head over to mtgotraders.com. That's where Breon's got his wrestling school set up. All he asks is that you bring a uh, bring your own lucha mask. He does not provide lucha masks. So, but he he's always looking for different uh, vampiric tutor. Search your library for a card. Put it on top. Okay. And I love, 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 love this new Vampiric Tutor art. Oh, man. When it was printed in Eternal Masters, or whatever the Vintage Masters, whatever the set was online, uh, when I saw the art for Vampiric Tutor, I was like, oh, yeah. That's some old school magic art right there. Well, with like a modern twist to it, it looks really good. Definitely enjoy it. Now, ways we can get into business. Um, he has no creatures. If he goes for Nekasaur, what we can do is gain control of Nekasaur if we draw into a gain control spell and then throw it, and that's going to really kind of jump that tax up because Nekasaur does cost fast, does cost five. So if we can deal with Nekasaur at least one time, it's going to be hard for him to get it down. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got six mana, so it'll just kind of complicate the things that he needs to do. But I'm not sure what he's searching up with Vampiric Tutor. Okay, so that's going to go on top. So he's going to put his four cards on the bottom and then draw that many cards. And it'll draw the one that he put on top. And like, like, like we could blow up that Teferi's puzzle box, but I'm okay with it. That'll work for me. It's fun getting a... Breon's kind of one of those decks where I don't mind getting a fresh look every turn. Just because sometimes you get some weird, awkward creatures that are hard to cast, like a leveler or something like that. And so simply... Uh, Simply getting a refreshed look at cards when you just need some real high impactful cards is always good. Okay. And that Nightscape Familiar is going to make blue and red spells cost one less to cast, so we can get down Nexor pretty cheap. Um, anything else? No, we're okay. We'll just hold on, let the Wear Tear go back into the library. Because we're okay on mana, so we're going to put these on the bottom. Terramorphic, Lightning Greaves, and Eater of Days. Okay. So we get down Terramorphic. That's going to give it a shuffle effect. So if we get down Eater of Days, we're going to skip our next two turns. He swings in, put the Lightning Greaves on there, put them down to 21. Then we throw... Yeah, that's still not enough. I don't, I don't think we really want to skip two turns with the Eater of Days. We'll go and get down Lightning Greaves, though. It'll be good to get it on Breon. It'll be good to test to see if he has any sort of removal. Okay, he doesn't have any removal. He probably would use it in response to Breon. Uh, let's go and swing in right now. Yeah, I can't. Ju I just don't see us getting into spots where we're going to cast Eater of Days and swing in. If his life, if our opponent's life total was down further, then we could do that. But uh, I got to do what we got to do. Okay, what do we got going on right now? Regenerate. Oh, okay. We're still going to gain that 4 with lifelink, so we're still going to go ahead and swing in. Oh, that's <laughs> that's such an odd thing. I forgot that card had regeneration. I, or at least I didn't realize it. Yeah, we're okay right now. Um, we also have the Terramorphic Expanse to shuffle up our library. We've put some stuff on the bottom, but um, I don't know if we're going to crack it just yet. We might get a little shuffle effect. But once it gets Nekasaur down, it's going to be pretty nasty with Teferi's Puzzle Box. But thankfully, if we can keep our hands hand size kind of low like this, it's not going to be that bad. And especially if we have Breon swinging in with uh, lifelink, that's really going to help us get away from that, uh, all those life loss triggers. But our opponent's got some nice basics over there. I've always dug this this mountain because it just looks like a forest to me, like a forest card. It's always looked good. And this island, classic too. 
Okay, so let's see what he's tapping for. He's tapping for two. The kind of the sweet spot um, is if our opponent gets his life total down to around 20, then we get in spots where we could swing it with an Eater of Days or Level or something like that with Haste. But we're going to be getting that next door card draw now, so I will definitely take that. And in fact, I'm probably going to crack this Terramorphic Expanse. That way I have access to all of our mana in case we need to do something using all of our mana. Okay, so let's go and crack this Terramorphic Expanse. We've got triple red, triple white. Yeah, let's just go and grab another mountain. Okay, so they kind of shuffle the cards we've been putting on the bottom of Teferi's Puzzle Box. And let's see. So depending on how he stacks it, um, so we've got the draw, our draw step trigger, and he's got the Teferi's Puzzle Box, and we're going to have the Nekasaur trigger right there. So that's one damage dealt. And we draw an additional card to see we'll be back. Uh, it'd be nice to have to throw, but we're okay. And there's nothing else we can do at instant speed, so we're going to have to put these on the bottom. And draw four. Ooh, active aggression and active treason? Okay, let's go and yield to these. Um, let's get down the planes. So we have more than enough mana to cast both of them. Um, the question is, how do we want to sequence this? Um, let's go... So we can gain control of Negasaur, gain control of Nightscape Familiar, swing in. We can only sacrifice one of them, because he's just going to regenerate over there. Um, let's go on Act of Treason on the Negasaur. So let's go red and two colorless. So he's going to swing in, then we're going to sacrifice it. And that's simply, we're just kind of, just more of a tempo play. We're going to gain control of Negasaur, so that way we can activate Breon. We can swing in with them um, if he wants to spend the mana for that Nightscape Familiar. And then we still have instant speed, gain control uh, the next turn. So we can do it during our upkeep if we want to. If he recast uh, Nekasaur. So let's go and swing it with Nekasaur. <laughs> it's always fun having different creatures on your side of the board. And our opponent might be tapping for something right now. I'm not sure what he'd be tapping for. I know he's not. There he goes. So let's swing it for Nekasaur. Nekasaur's coming in hot. A little magic after dark action. And he can block with the Nightscape and then regenerate. And just make sure he taps the mana to do that. So he can regenerate. Let's get that regeneration clause, get him tapped. And let's go and activate Breon. We're going to choose him. We're going to Rave Mysterio 619 this Nekasaur into the tomorrow. Boom. All right, so this is going to be two damage. Put him down at 28. We're going to gain two. But the important thing is, is we're going to make sure that he's going to have to recast Negasaur next turn. And then with us having active aggression, uh, we can gain control of it still since we have a, a draw step. So we'll go ahead and, um, yeah, we'll go and pass the turn. Now, if we had something like Thornbite Staff, we could have gained control of both and thrown both of them. But um, we're, we're in a good spot. We've got mana to do that. And we've got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We've got 11 mana. So simply um, return target permanent to its owner's hand. So he's returning the Oblivion Ring back to our hand. Um, sure. He's going to get his Coalition Relic back. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Sure. And they'll give us an extra card to draw. At this point in the game, he's got more than enough, and just one or a couple extra mana is not really not going to make that much of a difference. Okay, so we've got the Teferi puzzle box over here. He's going to have to put one down on the bottom and draw another card. And to my knowledge, um, he can't get down Neck. He might be able to get down Nekasaur. Put a charge counter on it. Okay. Yeah, so he's just got black red right now. So let's see what he's casting. Um, let's get Nexor back up. Oh, he's recasting Nexor. There we go. So during our upkeep, we can fire off active aggression. We're going to get that extra card draw, and we're not going to lose that life. And then we'll still be drawing some extra cards still. Okay, so we're, be sure and do that during our upkeep. So active aggression on Nekasaur. Uh, we're looking at, um, do we want to be aggressive on this one? Yeah, we're going to do that. We can swing in with Nekasaur if we need to. Um, one, two, three, 
and then yeah, we can go to pay two life. I like it. Whatever we draw, if we need to get it down, we can get it down. Okay, so we're going to active aggression on Necasaur. So we're still going to get the card draw. We're still going to get the extra Necasaur. It's just not going to deal damage to us. And then we can still sacrifice it again and deal that damage over there. So let's go ahead and let's get the Teferi's Puzzle Box. So put these three on the bottom. We have the Necasaur trigger. Okay. So let's get down Marsh Flats. Um, we can go... Now here's the kicker. We go Lupine Prototype. And then we can sacrifice it next turn. Unfortunately, we're going to miss out on Leveler, but we do have Marsh Flats, so we can shuffle it up. Um, let's go ahead and swing in with Nexor again. Because we're going to sacrifice it. And then we can get the Prototype down. All right, it didn't block right there. Okay, so Nexor swings in right there. We're still going to have to sacrifice him to get rid of him, so... Um, we're going to choose him, we're going to people's, people's Elbow, this Nekasaur, and let's go get the Prototype down. And they'll be able to do that for 5 next turn. Yeah, if we go for Leveler, we're going to exile our Library, and we're not going to really be able to close it out. We could get into a spot to where 10, 14, another 5, 9, yeah, we just can't really go for Leveler right now. And if our opponent wants to recast Nekasaur, they can go for it. Those are some nice little uh, game control spells. And that's the thing with Nekasaur. He costs so much that uh, a couple trips to the command zone, he gets beat up. He's a little hard to get out right there. At least I want our opponent to be spending their time uh, trying to get Nekasaur back out so we can take advantage of the card draw and then have some fun. Okay, so we've got on Thespian stage. Become a copy of Lan. Uh, about the only really damage he can do is uh, make a copy of Ancient Tomb right there. All right, so we got Nekasaur coming in, and then our opponent does have one card in hand, so we can't attack with the Lupine prototype. But at least we can activate for five, put him down nineteen, and depending on what we draw, and I may go ahead and crack this Marsh Flash to kind of shuffle shuffle that leveler around. It's on the bottom right now, so let's grab that. Let's grab a plateau, put it into play. Okay, path to exile. All right, so we've got the extra card draw. Let's go ahead and um, let's go and fire off that path on that Nekasaur. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So we have the card draw trigger on the stack right there, so we're going to draw an additional card, and we're not going to lose any life from it. Man, that Nekasaur is... Uh, <laughs> he's going to have to call his insurance company, man. The Nekasaur is pretty beat up on the trips to the command zone. So we're going to draw an extra card, not get... Uh, ooh. Put the three cards on the ball. Yeah, unfortunately we can't flash them in. That would be nice to have. Ooh, Thornbite Stife and Zealous Conscripts. That is good. Okay. So let's get down Thornbite Staff. And then we have nine. We have ten mana over here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine mana. So we can equip the Thornbite Staff for um, four. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. And that still leaves us five mana. We don't have to necessarily equip right now. We can Zealous Conscript, that Nightscape Familiar, or we can, well, we can't cast it next turn. Um, let's go and equip the Thornbite Staff onto Breon. Oh, we can't, let's get the Lightning Grease over the Prototype. Put the Thornbite Staff on there. It's going to pay four. So we're looking at one, two... And then three, four. Get the Thornbite Staff on there. Let's put the Lightning Greaves on there. Okay, so now he's like extra protected. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got exactly five. Um, let's go ahead and Zealous Conscripts, because it's going to have haste. And grab the Thornscape, swing in. So we'll get one, two, three, and then four. We could gain control of the. Rakdos, yeah, we could gain control of Rakdos, or we can grab the N Nightscape. I'd like to get rid of the Nightscape, just because of that re regeneration clause. At least we can swing in right now. Okay, so we're going to swing in with everybody. So we'll get 5, 8, drops them down to 16. Now we're getting, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so he's going to get that Nightscape back. We have Zealous Conscripts to swing in for 3. 
We have a Thornbite staff on Breon. So basically, now that we have the Thornbite staff on there, what's going to happen is we can untap and tap Breon every time a creature dies. So we can run through the Zealous Conscript for a red mana. So we've got eight points of damage we can throw at our opponent, which will put him down to eight. And then if he goes for a Nekasaur again, we'll get some extra card draw. And then hopefully we can get a few more creatures. Uh, we're going to have to put the Giant on the bottom, unfortunately. But um, as far as the board goes, we've got eight points of damage we can chunk across over there. It's been a nice little, nice little game over here. But you can see, yeah, we we just basically keeping Nekasaur off the battlefield, getting that little extra card draw, and then uh, capitalizing on the extra card draw. And Teferi's Puzzle Box has been really good in this one. Okay, so we're getting out Nekasaur. He's got only three mana available. Yeah, I feel good about this one. Okay. Grab the reins. That is instant speed. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's go and grab the reins. Grab the reins on Nekasaur. So we're looking at um, one, two, three, and then four. <laughs> sure, our opponent's just thrilled with this. We gained control of his commander like a hundred times. <laughs> Nekasaur, he wants to come back, man. He loves hanging out over here. He loves his little lucha mask. Right, so we're going to put these on the bottom. Spark Trooper. Oh, that, that's a really good draw. Okay, so let's go. Let's go Spark Trooper. Let's add two colorless. Add that mana. Have to tap for one more red. Okay, so let's go and swing it with Nekasaur's Ellis Conscript and the Spark Trooper. All right, he scoops it up, yeah. So basically, we have three activations. That's going to be six up top. We put him down to ten. We've got the activation on the Lupine prototype, and we have three ways to activate Breon after we swing in with only one blocker. So yeah, that's a nice little match right there. Sorry we, uh... It's always fun to have an extra Lucha Mask for Nekasaur. Magic After Dark action. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.